Fatima. A mystery affecting Iraq's most vulnerable. Fatima. And why why are they saying they see a, a sudden increase? Are they linking uh, this yes. to the war? Yeah, yes, 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 with the explosions. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's say uh, there is a lot of uh, weapon and explosion happen in their area. Another tragedy for a country already reeling from years of war and conflict. Could there be any other explanation other than the war? They have no explanation other than this. Definitely there is very definite pollution with the nutrient, with the food, with the, with the water. Ten years since the US-led invasion of Iraq, the people of this country are dealing with a battle that could last for generations. For years, stories have been told about the rise in birth defects and cancer in children, where fighting was the fiercest. Now, more and more scientists are backing this up. I'm trying to find out what's happening to the children of Iraq. War has brought me to Basra. You wouldn't know it now, but this place saw some of the heaviest fighting of the Iraq War. I'm here to investigate reports about a staggering rise in the number of children with birth defects and childhood cancer. I'm at the Basra Children's and Maternity Hospital, surrounded by a sea of black chadors. It's difficult to know who's pregnant and who's not. In the waiting room, I meet Azhan. She's four months pregnant and is waiting to have a checkup. Her mother in law, Sabiha, waits patiently beside her, whispering verses from the Quran. Azhan has every reason to feel anxious. Indeed, for her, that's true. She's had five miscarriages and two other children have died of birth defects. Since 2003, the rate of babies born with a birth defect at this hospital has increased by 60%. And that number continues to rise. Salam alaikum. Salam, salam. In almost every ward I go into, I find at least one baby born with a birth defect. Not everyone wants to take their babies home. She's one years old. One years old. Mm -hmm. Twelve months ago, Fatima was born here. Her ears. Her parents couldn't cope with her disabilities and left her behind. Fatima. <laughs> she can hear the name here. Yeah. Fatima. Down the corridor, 
I find seven-day-old Zara being cradled by her grandmother. At first glance, she appears to be normal. But there is something wrong. Zara has spina bifida. One of the birth defects Iraqi doctors say they've been seeing more and more. Her mother is recovering from the birth at home. What was her mother's reaction when she found out? Zara's grandmother is convinced she'll soon be better, but her condition is permanent. What's certain is that she'll have a hard life. There's little the doctors can do. But for some, like Dr. Sabak, trying to find a reason, a solution to this mystery, has become a mission. We expect to find a raised level. He's a gynecologist, but his research has led him to teeth. These are samples of uh, teeth from children who have a congenital birth defect. He's sending these off to be checked for high levels of lead and mercury as part of an international study. But until now, he's mostly had to work on his own. And the sample actually collected by my wife's because she's dentist here in the same hospital, so she helps me in collecting the, the, the specimen. The specimen, right. Yes. His working theory is that the war is to blame. Heavy metals from munitions used in the bombing and fighting. So you're saying that mercury, lead, yeah. uranium lead to birth defects? Yeah, sure. This is a sure, this is for sure. This is a, this is a scientific, this is part of scientific talk. Definitely the increment in the level of lead and mercury and radium had definite effect on the birth defect, the definite relationship between birth defect and these substances. This is scientifically speaking. Could there be any other explanation other than the war? We have no explanation other than this. Definitely there is very definite pollution with the nutrient, with the food, with the, with the water. Because why they have this increment then? We don't have an explanation. Why they have this increment? How you could explain it? Someone should explain it to me. Why this there is definite increment in the level of lead and mercury in the exposed areas to weapons? We have no explanation other than this. Downstairs, he prepares to conduct Azan's ultrasound. Mm. This is the femur. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, um, what happens next is alarming. Because, uh, but at this stage, this doesn't look normal to you? It doesn't look normal. If you compare, because we compare the femoral length with the gestational age, mm. you see? Mm -hmm. If she is supposed to be now 18 weeks pregnant, the femur goes with 14 weeks pregnancy. So, so doctor, patients, you're, uh, seeing, you're seeing another case yeah, here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you suspect that... Yeah, yeah, until now she had a short femur. She's going to, even the, this pregnancy she might have also, she gave birth to congenital amyloid with with My God. upper lip and lower lips. And we don't he thinks condition. this baby also has a birth defect. Has she got any idea? No, we can't tell her now. Uh, yeah, we have just to see and we keep follow this patient. Why wouldn't you suggest abortion then? Oh, oh. <laughs> you know, I mean, this if is you a know, big tragedy. We can't. Yeah, yeah. The law in our country, the law in our country, we have legal and ethical rule, and both laws, the ethical and um, ethical and the, 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 the I would say by the government was not. Yeah. Uh, does not accept to do termination of pregnancy to them. No way accept termination. Uh, ex termination of pregnancy should be done only if the life of the baby interfere with the life of the mother. 
Outside, I ask Azan how the scan went. It's heartbreaking to witness Azhar's dreams and hopes for her unborn baby and yet she has absolutely no idea what the doctors just told us. Azhan now knows the results. Rabab doesn't have a birth defect, but she's fighting a different battle. Across town, another hospital. In each bed here, a child with cancer. Local doctors tell me they've seen the number of paediatric cancer cases triple. Three-year-old Dalal has leukaemia. For 40 days, her mother has been by her side, wondering why this has happened to her daughter. Was cancer a common thing in your area before the war? No, no, no. Ma chan. Ma chan Ma Families might see a link. Dalal's doctor is not so certain. Really, I don't know. Because I need a fact, and the fact must be research. There is no research done because what is the cause of this increase in the cancer. I told her there are many reasons. Which one exactly, I don't know. But it seems the people themselves seem to think it's got to do with the war. It is a non-scientific way. So, are birth defects on the rise? And is the war connected? In Baghdad, if you follow the medical outfits, you make your way to the Ministry of Health. The Ministry has been working with the World Health Organization on a report about this very issue. But the results keep getting delayed. Your annual general meetings report, is that the one you've got here? But when I sit down with the senior official, he doesn't hold back. أكيد إنه كل الدراسات المعمولة من قبل وزارة الصحة تثبت وبالأدلة القطعية إنه نسبة التشوهات الخلقية ازدادت في العراق طبعا أيضا نسبة الأمراض السرطانية أيضا ازدادت بشكل كبير لأنه هذه المواد دائما هي أما تسبب الأورام السرطانية أو التشوهات الخلقية بالنسبة إذا كانت الأم حاملا Dr. Chalab says there could be many factors, including the use of depleted uranium and the looting and destruction of Saddam Hussein's laboratories. Considering your findings, will the government now call for action? <laughs> I have no answer. <laughs> I know uh, uh, the fact, but I cannot say anything. Having something like this confirmed at such a senior level, I'm eager to find out more. So Dr. Chalab puts his researchers at my disposal. Uh, so we can... Sure. Uh, what's your name? Yalda. Yalda. Yeah. What could be the cause One doctor tries to help me wade through the statistics. This is the annual report. Yes. We all work in it and we collect the data. We do the... Uh, we unite... Oh, uh, Another joins in. You are welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much. You are both asking about the congenital anomalies? Yes, yeah. And the to my surprise, Piece by piece, the report is being revealed, but not everything. But we, we, I know, certain government, I will not give you the name, yeah. that they recorded a high per, percent of congenital anomaly, but I can't speak it to you unless I be sure and we announce it. One government, really, 
You they can't tell us though who, which governor. No, it is. I will not. Yeah. Stop secret. I, I mean, uh, is it one that you suspected might be the case? Yes, we suspect because it is something happening about the explosions and the weapons. Yes. A begins with A. I will not say. <laughs> You can't guess, I know you can't guess, no, I'm not sick. <laughs> mm -hmm. And why, why are they saying they see a, a sudden increase? Are they linking uh, this yes. to the war? Yeah, yes, yes, with the explosions. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's say uh, there is a lot of uh, weapon and explosion happen in their area. In Africa. Yes. Uh, you have the same uh, governorate for the cancer cases, you know, Nainawa, Ambar, Najaf. Same, same thing. Same, same uh, mm. government. And again, three places where three there was places, a lot yes. of fighting. Yes. Yes. For the yeah. cancer cases or for the congenital mm. Same, same governance. But you know that everyone knows that the weapons and explosion is harmful and have a lot of chemicals which is harmful. Mm -hmm. So we connect, but there is no yani, real job about studying the chemicals and the types of congenital anomaly. So now just we announced to to just to bring the attention of the responsible or stakeholder in our country about something was done, so the people of that government they need help. So it's a huge crisis then. Yes. Do you see it as a big crisis? Yes, I yeah. think it's a big. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Because it, yeah. It's the of war, multiple wars. And the next generation. Yes. Next generation. Yes. yes. Mm. I leave the Ministry confident that the report will confirm a rise in birth defects. When we contacted the American Defence Department, they didn't respond. The British Ministry of Defence said they were waiting for the results of the Iraqi government report and it would be premature to suggest a link to any cause without reliable evidence. One can't ignore the environmental impact of war. After decades of conflict, Iraq is littered with leftover munitions and contaminated sites. A recent European study has estimated that it will cost $45 million to clean up the country and will take years. Every single doctor I've spoken to has told me that the rise in birth defects and cancer in this country is caused by the environment that people live in. Ten years after the US-led invasion, the environmental crisis in this country is widespread. For example, here in the centre of Baghdad, that building beside me, some claim was cleaned up two years ago, but environmentalists we've spoken to say it remains contaminated. But the thing is, the environmental damage caused by the war remains an extremely sensitive issue. We've been trying to get the environmental minister to allow us to access some of these sites, but we've been blocked. Even an environmental activist who initially agreed said he felt pressure of what the repercussions would be. I ponder what I was told by one senior source. That despite their findings, little is likely to be done to clean up the toxic areas or help the families affected. We uh, collected all this data about where they had lived, what kind of... Dr. Musgan Sava B. Asfahani says that's not an option. This to be happening in two cities so far apart. Uh, very similar scenarios. It, is, it leaves very little doubt that the reason why we see these birth defects is the kind of metals uh, that was dropped on these two cities. It was her research on birth defects in Fallujah and Basra that brought me to Iraq in the first place. I reach her by Skype at her home in America. She says the world has a moral duty to do something about what she describes as a public health emergency. These both cities, uh, in my opinion, need to be uh, tested. Water, air, soil, food, uh, everything that people come in contact with has to be tested for uh, for metals specifically and once we have that data 
we will be able to locate uh, areas where this pollution is uh, originating from, and then we can take uh, steps to clean it up. The technology is there, uh, uh, and the, the, the willingness and the funding has to be put behind it so that we can clean up this environment. Uh, generations of children in Iraq uh, will be affected extremely uh, harshly by this if we don't do anything. <laughs> On the outskirts of Basra, I meet a family struggling to care for a child growing up with birth defects. Nine-year-old Ali has cerebral palsy. His hair tested positive for high levels of lead and mercury. How difficult is it to care for Ali? They live in a neighborhood still dealing with the aftermath of the war. Who came to clean up the area, the weapons, the ammunitions left behind? When did they clean this up? Hello, Ali. Ali doesn't want to be left out of my visit. Hello, Ali. He knows that guests are in the house. <laughs> and his brothers and sisters, they play with him? Ali's father tells me he also tries to make his eldest son happy. And whatever the hardships of caring for him, they say Ali gives back. We've just left the home of Ali and what I quickly realized was despite all their suffering and poverty the love of parents and a mother's love is universal my journey comes to an end here thousands of tiny graves make up this children's cemetery Abu Bakr shows me around. His family has been burying the children of Basra for five generations. And so little. Since taking over from his father ten years ago, he is shocked by what he has seen. Did your father ever tell you that he saw such cases when he was doing it? No. 
And then he has to get back to work. Another family has arrived. The sad truth is that some children will always suffer and die before their time. We still don't know for sure that these birth defects are yet another tragic consequence of war. But it's time to find out for sure and act. Thank you.